Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. And thank you for giving us all a measure of faith, O oh God. Help us to live in that faith, Lord, to believe you, to follow you. Just as, as uh, the prophets of old did. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, you've all heard the story of Jonah, a book in the Old Testament. And people look at the story of Jonah two different ways. Some call it a fish story, and some call it a story about a fish. And those who call it a fish story, they don't know if it was true or not. And those who call it a story about a fish know that it really happened. Jonah was a prophet. Jonah knew God and he trusted in God. And he loved God. And um, in Second Kings there, it tells about a prophecy that Jonah gave, gave to King Jeroboam II. And that prophecy was fulfilled. See, Jonah could hear God's voice, maybe not in his ears, but in his heart. And God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah did not want to go. And the last chapter of the book of Jonah tells us why Jonah did not want to go. Because Jonah knew so much about God he knew that if he went to Nineveh and told them that Nineveh was going to be overthrown, he knew God was sending him there to have those people repent. And Jonah knew that whatever he told them would not happen. God, he said, you're a merciful God, you're a loving God, and that's why I didn't want to go. You see, <clears throat> Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. And all throughout Bible history, the Assyrians were always invading Israel. Israel was afraid of the Assyrians. Israel didn't like the Assyrians. And the Assyrians didn't like the Jews. It wouldn't be much like if God told one of us to go to the capital of Iran or the capital of North Korea and tell them it's going to be overthrown. Jonah wasn't afraid of dying. He knew God. He wasn't afraid of dying because when he was running away from God on the ship, he told the people, just throw me overboard and everything will stop. The storm will stop. They didn't want to do it. But a man who would be afraid of dying wouldn't tell somebody to just throw him off the ship in the middle of the ocean. Now Jonah had great faith in God, but he did not want to do what God was telling him to do because Jonah didn't like the Assyrians and he probably thought they deserved to be destroyed. He also probably had pride. That's what is a downfall to all of us sometime or another. Because he knew that if what he said didn't come to pass they would think he's a fool. And he didn't want that. So Jonah was running away from God <coughs> And yet, he realized he couldn't do it. He told the men on the boat, throw me overboard, the storm will stop. And when they threw Jonah overboard, immediately the storm stopped. But God had created a big fish, some call it a whale. Some people think it was a basking shark, which is a, a surface feeder and doesn't eat meat and is pretty big and could have swallowed Jonah without chewing him up, but so could a whale. We don't know. Just a big fish. The Bible says a big fish swallowed Jonah, and Jonah went down into the belly of the fish. And he was there for three days and three nights. And the people who believe that's a fish story don't think it's possible that anybody could live inside a fish for three days and three nights. Craig, could you give me that uh, Jonah chapter 2 up on the screen? I don't know how Jonah could live in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights, except that's where it takes faith 
to believe that God can do anything. See, that's where the faith comes in. If we believe that that story about Jonah and the fish is true, then we have faith that God can do anything he wants to do. But Jonah could have also died in the belly of the fish. Matter of fact, there are some Jews that think he did. And God could have raised him to life. We don't know. But look at what it says. I'm going to have you go right down the line here. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. So we know that Jonah made it down into the belly alive. Go on to the next verse. Saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. Now that is the place of death. That's what we call hell or death. He answered me out of the belly of Sheol out of death as I cried and you heard my voice go on <clears throat> for you cast me into the deep into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me all your waves and your billows passed over me go on Craig then I said I am driven away from your sight yet I shall again look upon your holy temple so Jonah knew he was not a lost person. He was driven out of God's sight, but he said, I'm going to look upon your holy temple. Bring me the next one. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. <clears throat> Weeds were wrapped about my head. So if, a, if he was swallowed by a surface feeder who ate just weeds and algae and things, they'd sure wrap around his head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. And when the Bible talks about the land whose bars closed upon me forever, it's talking about the bars of death that close upon a person. Now, <clears throat> did he enter that land? Or did he just go down to it? Yet... <clears throat> You brought up my life from the pit. The pit is death. You brought up my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God. Craig, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Now, <clears throat> this is where the Jews were divided. It appears that Jonah went down to the pit <clears throat> The bars closed upon him, but yet he says, when my life was fainting away, which means he has not yet died. Keep going. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. Craig, in the next one. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. So did Jonah die and God resurrect him? Or did God keep him alive for three days and three nights? People are divided. We don't know. But there's a miracle either way. It takes a great miracle to live inside a fish for three days and three nights. And it takes a great miracle to have died and be resurrected again. So Jonah goes to Nineveh. And he says to the people of Nineveh, God is going to overthrow this land. Now what is so interesting here, at the same <clears throat> time that Jonah lived, that King Jeroboam was king, there was an eclipse of the sun over Nineveh, just like we had last August here in the United States. In 763 B.C., there was an eclipse over Nineveh. And according to history, the Assyrians believed <clears throat> that an eclipse was a sign that the king would be overthrown and killed, that the walls would be broken down of their city, and that someone else would take the throne. So did Jonah show up during the eclipse? 
Did he show up right after the eclipse? We don't know. But it's so interesting that there was one, and the Ninevites believed that was catastrophe for their nation, for their city. And Jonah said, this city's going to be destroyed, which is exactly what the eclipse told them, or what they believed about an eclipse. And so the king had the whole city fast and pray for three days, not eat any food, not drink any water. And the people turned their hearts towards God, and the city was spared. And it was spared for another 150 years after that. And Jonah was angry with God because he said, Lord, I told you that this is what would happen. If I went there and told them what you wanted me to tell them, then they'd repent and you'd spare them. And he didn't want that. But he still knew God. He still had great faith. You see, all of us here, even with a great faith that we have, we're not perfect. None of us are. We all have failures and faults and fallings. But we can still have great faith. And we can still be growing in that area. Now what is so interesting here, those people who say, is Jonah a fish story or a story about a fish? When Jesus came along, Jesus clarified it. Jesus said, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And Jesus is not referring to some myth. He's referring to an historical fact because he's the Son of God. Now when Jesus told parables, and a parable was only designed to teach one thing, Jesus did not tell us if Jonah was dead or alive in the fish, but he told us he'd be there for three days and three nights. And Jesus would be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. And this is where it takes faith for us to believe that everything in the Bible is true. It's not made up stuff. It's fact. It's true. Jesus is true. Several years ago, the ELCA put out a book called The Book of Faith. It was a devotional book. The pastors in the church where I attended asked me if I would teach a, a Bible class on the Book of Faith, and I went through it. And I said to them, sure, I'll teach it, but I, want, I will also share the other side of it. And they said, oh, go ahead. So one of the lessons in there was about Jonah. And it was pretty good. It told the history and what happened. But then after it was all done, the author, the man who wrote that devotion, said this at the bottom, at the end of his devotion. He said, I don't know if the story of Jonah is true, if it was made up, or if it really happened. He didn't know. I thought, wow. He doesn't believe. So I asked the class of 25 people a question. I said, what is easier to believe? Is it easier to believe that Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of a fish and lived to tell about it? Or is it easier to believe that after you die, you will somehow figure out a way to get into heaven? And did the faces change? You see, our faith, <clears throat> our salvation is based on the fact that Jesus lives. And if we believe that God raised him from the dead, believe in our hearts, then we'll be saved. But that takes a lot of faith. That takes more faith than believing that a man can live inside a fish 
or even resurrected from a fish after three days. But that's what God calls us to do, to have faith. Jesus lives. He rose from the dead. And if we believe that in our hearts, we will be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help our faith, help our belief. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief, God. And Lord, help us to grow in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.